Kevin, the YouTube numbers are running up. You guys are supporting the show in droves. Spotify, Apple, the audio platforms, you guys listening over there. And we're going to bring you some more content. We are at the stove today, Kevin. Uh, so firstly, how you doing, pal? I'm lovely, pal. How about yourself? I'm good, pal. It's a Wednesday over here in Australia. Raw was yesterday. I'm three hours and 42 minutes away from getting my Elimination Chamber 2024 ticket in the pre-sale. Exciting. Uh, I'm refreshing as soon as the pre-sale goes live. I want to get four seats. That's the plan. I'll let you know how it goes in the next show. But Kevin, before we get there, that's for the future today. What have the listeners got to look forward to? What, what, what's on the cards, pal? Oh, we have a loaded episode of Elite Take for you. Elite Take is back, baby. So the the main question, this is the one that's going to be the big headline-grabbing segment. We're going to talk about LA Knight and has he peaked, which I teased last week. Uh, you know, Then we'll talk about how we would fix the women's division. Uh, we might talk about a certain wrestling legend and their uh, their energy drink that is being pimped out on a on a wrestling television show. Uh, we're going to talk about the man, the Samoan man that single-handedly ended John Cena's career. A single thumb ended John Cena's career. Um, you know, we're going to talk about TNA, what that means. TNA is back, pal. War games. We may even do a little uh, little WrestleMania predictions. And then, of course, we're going around the world. So, yeah, we got a loaded episode of Elite Take. This is going to be a fun one. I can't wait, pal. I'm ready. But let's get to it. Where do you want to start? Well, Kevin, I want to start off with, I mean, this will be the title. This will be what a lot of you have clicked on. This will probably be a thumbnail. This is about LA Knight. Uh, he main invented Crown Jewel in the match against Roman Reigns. Many gave that match pretty good rating. People enjoyed the match. I did. I know you did too. We said that in our review, which is going crazy on YouTube as well. Uh, Kevin, I just want to ask you, is that in the title, has LA Knight peaked? Was that like the top of what LA Knight will produce? Like, you know, because obviously he'll still be over. We're not saying LA Knight's going to come out and smack down to crickets. We're not saying that. But as far as his career trajectory, a main event match against Roman Reigns at the Saudi Arabian WrestleMania, pal, can you go up from there? Or is, is that truly the peak of LA Knight? Like, where to now? I think it is a fair question to be asked. Uh, like, I could get up here and I could be hyperbolic and I could say, LA Knight is peaked. He's never going to main event another PLE. And then he'll just main event the next one after Survivor Series in December. Like, with, with that luck, like, so who knows? So I'm not going to set myself up for a bad take there. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think the question is fair. Um, I, I, I akin this to, like, Bray Wyatt in 2014, when Bray Wyatt faced Cena and ran into the Cena wall. And, you know, you had the, the, the kids, the choir, singing that he's got the whole world in his hands, the light bulbs, the, the phone lights when he came out. Bray Wyatt was over, as over as, as he'd ever been. And yeah, that was his peak, realistically. Until, I mean, maybe, like, he kind of got to that level again with The Fiend. But I feel like the 2014 run was his peak. And it took him a while to really get his foot under him. It took a character change and a massive creative change. So, with that being said, Bray Wyatt was, what, like, 27 when that happened? 26, 25? Like, he was a young young guy. Just getting his start. Ran up against Cena. With LA Knight, he's 41. LA Knight is 41 years old. Realistically, how many pay-per-view main events does he have in him? How many PLE main events does he have in him? How many big storylines does he have in him? I don't know if this is his peak, but it very well could be. Now, the, the, the question here is, I guess, was that the best creative that, that you think we're going to see from LA Knight? Because that's really the question here. Like, Bray, and Bray Wyatt in 2014, in that case, that was his best creative that we ever saw. Like, I, do you think LA Knight is capable of more? Well, it's hard to replicate the momentum, right? right? Now, LA Knight was rolling. He was rolling. You know, he's cutting the promos. He interrupts Roman Reigns. They do the contract signing. He cooks Roman Reigns one week. The next week, it's more even. Roman has the line about, you're a redneck version of my cousin and all that. They do the match. LA Knight's stampeding into Crown Jewel. He's, he's like a celebrity to Saudi children. There's videos on WWE's TikTok. Valet Knight being a, a superhero to these little Saudi children. They're like, oh, my God. And then LA Knight's lifting a kid up and he, he dunks a basketball, like all this sort of stuff. It's, it's hard to visualize from here something that will top that. It is. Uh, what he can do from here, I don't know. Maybe a match against or a feud against Logan Paul. But is that on the same level as 
Roman Reigns and the main event of Crown Jewel with all steam going? No, it's, it's a, it'll be good. I don't doubt that. But is it that same level? Is it that peak that we're, we're sort of alluding to? Not really. Uh, where else LA Knight goes? Do you picture him, Kevin? And I'll ask you this question. Maybe, okay, he's hit the Roman wall. This is like the, you know, this is like the glass ceiling sort of thing. It's like the equivalent of in the 90s in the NBA. This is your Michael Jordan. You, you might be Patrick Ewing, Reggie Miller, all these other great players in the era, John Stockton, yada, yada. But there's that sort of ceiling you just can't break, which is sort of what LA Knight's ran into as over as he's been. Um, that seems like what this is. Question for you. Do you picture LA Knight ever winning a world title? Not really. Honestly, I don't. Does that mean that he still can't reach higher heights without winning a championship? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that, that higher heights would be. Would that be like a, a really good one-on-one match with John Cena at a WrestleMania? Something like that? I don't know. I don't know what that would look like, but I, I realistically, I don't see a world championship run in the cards form. Because hmm. realistically... Let's just like, real quick map this out for, for the next year at least. This, this is the directions it, it seems like. Roman's title, the universal, double, whatever it's being called, the Roman title, we'll call it. Roman will have that for how many months? And you assume either Cody will dethrone him or he'll be solo in like a year. So at least the next year, LA and I start winning that. And then Seth Rollins' title, Rollins will probably hold that till WrestleMania, maybe longer. And then who wins it after that? Who knows? Do you really picture LA Knight winning that title? I don't. I find that hard to picture. I, I imagine that's sort of the Raw. That's the wrestler's title. Maybe Gunther will win that. Maybe McIntyre might win it if he has another good run in 2020. I don't know. I don't picture LA Knight winning that. Uh, I think LA Knight will end up bouncing out to around the US title sort of picture. Something involving Logan Paul. You'll have LA Knight feuding with like Lashley on SmackDown. LA Knight will be in that sort of picture. And is that bad? No. We're just saying, I think at least, the peak was Crown Jewel. It's hard to top that. It's hard to top stampeding into Saudi Arabia, being a celebrity to the Saudi kids, taking on the tribal chief, sitting at the head of the table, interrupting his entrance. It's just hard to top that. The facts are the facts. I don't know, Kevin. Is that fair? It is. It's very fair. I acknowledge that up front. I mean, the question now is, where do they go with LA Knight from here? From here, yeah. I think he has to still be involved somehow with the bloodline on SmackDown. Uh, it feuding, whether he's punching Jimmy Uso on SmackDowns or... Kevin, th- this is the thing, right? Like, for the rest of 2023, mm-hmm. as we'll discuss later on, the War Games thing is set. That's literally... That's a Raw match main eventing War Games and right. Survivor Series. The SmackDown side of it is sort of up in the air. We don't know yet. We're recording this before SmackDown. With what we've seen in 2023, what will probably happen, Roman will be off TV, it'll be LA Knight, it'll be Jimmy Uso, Paul Heyman, Sokoa, some variation of that. They'll do some TV matches, LA Knight versus Jimmy Uso, probably main event SmackDown, LA Knight, Sokoa again, maybe, some something like that. Does LA Knight get a rematch on SmackDown in December? Maybe, maybe he doesn't. He probably enters the Royal Rumble, Kevin. He's probably one of the big names to try and win the Rumble, I guess. Maybe he'll be in the Elimination Chamber, and then maybe he'll face Logan Paul at WrestleMania for the US title. That's probably the more realistic sort of roadmap. Um, Is that bad, any of it? No, I think it all sounds pretty good. Sounds fair. We're not giving LA Knight a seven-year-long world title run, but he's still involved. He's over. He's selling good merch, pal. Um, Pal, have you got any LA Knight merch? Uh, Not yet, pal. I don't know if I plan on uh, copying any LA Knight, yeah, merch. What about you, pal? Uh, You got got, got your 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 LA Knight cup cover, pal. You got your LA Knight uh, lawn chair. You got your LA Knight bookmark, pal. You got your LA Knight socks. You got got an LA Knight running shirt. Oh, no. Oh, can you imagine? You just had this big running shirt, like one of those tank <laughs> single tops. Yeah, <laughs> that would no, actually be pretty be... bad. Like, I, that would that be that be a good look. Oh, okay. Well, we'll we'll leave it there on that one. Um. So yeah, that's that discussion. Leave your thoughts uh, down below. Um, Kevin, question for you. Yes. Now we've sort of addressed this in the reviews, the the pay per views mainly. This is when we discuss this most. But sort of a quick one. I don't, we don't need to do an hour and a half fantasy booking going through. 10 years of women's storylines. Why not, pal? 
because no one would watch it. Um, what do you mean? The Kevin... <laughs> like, like how nobody watches the, the women's matches during the PLEs? <laughs> now, question being, how would you fix WWE's women's division in, I guess, a simple, straight-to-the-point answer? Is there a simple way to it, or is there more they need to do? Well, I think they got to do a... They got to look into addition by subtraction. You know, uh, get rid of some people. You know, or demote them. Um, maybe put a little effort into it. I, I don't think that would hurt. Like, that's probably the number one thing. Just, like, Triple H, instead of just writing, all right, Rhea Ripley versus four women on a piece of paper, maybe, like, four weeks out from the PLE, he could go on Raw and say, okay, we're going to do this segment. We're going to make Rhea, Rip Rhea Ripley look strong here. Wait, no. Okay, now the babyface is going to get one up on Rhea Ripley. And maybe build a, um, a nice storyline, a nice rivalry. Maybe get a little personal, you know? Mm. Uh, scandalous. Well, like, who was who Rhea Ripley dating before Bud uh, Buddy Murphy? Was she dating someone? Did she? I don't know. Or either way, they could bring bring Buddy Murphy back. Steal him from AEW. You know, just, yeah. just uh, breach his contract. Bring Buddy Murphy back. And have Buddy Murphy viciously confront Rhea Ripley about her relationship with Dominic. You know, and then have Buddy Murphy bring in somebody like Tiffany Stratton from NXT and just like, here, I'm going to have Tiffany Stratton kick your ass. This is my new hey, girlfriend. Like, Already? That's more than Kevin. That beat Zoe Stark winning a battle royal. Yeah. And then just facing her at Survivor Series when you all know she's not going to win. I'm like, that's what, that's what they did on Raw. Oh, Zoe Stark's the next challenger. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as Tony Khan famously told us during his Twitter meltdown, WWE had no problem breaching contracts of AEW talent while his mother was suffering from a real life illness. So, I mean, they could easily just steal Buddy Murphy from AEW, just, you know, like, like, like they used to do back in the day in college with colleges, bro. Just give him some underhanded money. Here, Triple H can walk up, go over to Buddy Murphy's house. Here, I got you a car, pal. Come to my show. Whatever. Like, they can make it happen. Yeah, and I guess that this just comes down to, I mean, the angles they shoot, how they present the matches, because when they present it as, oh, here's Piper Niven or whatever, she is, whatever she's been called now, and Chelsea Green coming out for a match against Shotzi, okay, and, like, uh, you know, it, 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 do some backstage and, segments, do yeah. some angles, maybe have some a wrestler call out Rhea Ripley and say, Rhea, I, I'm better than you, and I'm going to, you know, work my way and prove it over the next three months. I'm going to clear out this whole division on the road to you and, and your time is numbered on November whatever or I'll come January 17th or just do something like that. Keep it fairly simple. This isn't the most mind-blowing booking, but I guess it's something. Have a wrestler go, my birthday is January 21st and my birthday present is going to be beating you for the title. Monday Night Raw falls on that day. I'm going to win eight or how many matches on the road to that. I'm going to beat you on that day. Right, and then that already sets up something. So you think, oh, ex wrestlers doing this, the building up to it. instead, just oh well, it's always psych on a battle royal, pal. Have fun. Ray's gonna win in a ten minute match of the pay per view. It's like okay, great, pal. Yeah. I have a serious question for you. This is what we oh, do Lord. here with at Elite Heat. You and I are oh, serious no. analysts, serious oh, no. journalists. Oh, no. uh, your number two wrestler of all time, Richard oh, no. Flair, oh, no. recently made his uh, triumphant return. To wrestling television at an AEW Dynamite live show. And on that live show, it, it was announced that, it, that Ric Flair would be here for Sting's retirement tour. And then it came out wow. a few days later, maybe a few hours later, AEW had struck a multi-year deal with Ric Flair to have him as an ambassador of the brand and to have him promote his new energy drink, the Woo Energy Drink, the sparkling mushroom drink, pal. Uh, in America, they retail for a six pack for twenty four ninety nine. Pal, have you copped your pack of Woo Energy Drink Sparkling Mushroom, pal? It comes in three flavors. You know, he, he got a, he got the whole portfolio for us, pal. You got dragon fruit, you got lemon, you got strawberry banana, and they all come with a nice picture of Ric Flair's smiling face, pal. Yeah, they, they're they're nicely colored, very well branded. I mean, pal, come on. It's Ric Flair, Woo Energy Drink. Feel the Woo. All right, they're, they're an organic mushroom base. It's supposed to give you energy, help you think better. What are you waiting for, pal? Come on. I'm trying to get us an ad read here. I'm trying to get us a sponsorship. 
Do you, do you want this to be the sponsorship? I got, yeah, I'm all for sponsors. And if any potential sponsors <laughs> listening to the show, we'd love to have you on board. We you know, promote your product, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. We do all that stuff to promote. But this, this product, uh, let's be fair here, Kevin. Um, the picture of Ric Flair on the drink, on the can, doesn't look like Ric Flair in 2023. Uh, that looks like Ric Flair from 1983. Yeah. Um, the Ric Flair of 2023 looks 110. He looks like he's barely alive still. Um, and we've discussed this. And everyone who has a pair of eyes who's watched this, I guess, Ric Flair return in the last couple of weeks has seen that. Um, as far as the product itself, I haven't purchased any. Um, I think we should do a, a late heat review one of these weeks. Me and having like, a, a dedicated segment. I'll, I'll buy, I don't want to pay $24.99, probably plus shipping, plus the exchange rate of US dollars to Australian dollars. It's probably $50 or $60 for a six pack of these energy drinks. In Let's Australian see. Dollars, I better check it out. How much the shipping is? Go ahead. The shipping plus the fact that it's US dollars, so it's going to be like forty Australian dollars, and then the shipping is probably going to be sixty dollars for a six pack of Dragon Fruit Woo Energy Mushroom Elixir Sparkling Energy from Ric Flair. Um, but nonetheless, Kevin, this is the drink, and keep this in mind. This is the beverage, Kevin. The Tony Khan has moved heaven and earth. He's rearranged his roster. He's made a bunch of wrestlers unhappy. He's got disgruntled employees wanting to contact HR. He's got wrestlers whinging to family members, whinging to co-workers behind the scenes, presumably, allegedly, just using common sense. Because Ric Flair, a 74-year-old who is barely conscious, barely with us, is out there wooing, promoting energy in the main He's strutting, main pal. Segments. He's strutting in the main segments of AEW. So, yeah, pal, um, to answer the question, short version, no, I haven't purchased dragon fruit, lemon, or strawberry banana, woo, elixir, energy, Ric Flair. I haven't bought that, pal. Maybe I should. Um, it's probably cheaper for you to buy it. Yeah. Um, so if you want to maybe have it on a segment, you can do a review for the listeners, pal. Man, it's $35 for shipping. I, I, I could get a tank of gas with that, pal. For six <laughs> energy drinks. That's insane. Let me just say, it's a 35 USD to eight. I'm, I'm doing this conversion right now. So yeah, 35 for you. That's insane for a six pack of it. $54 and 40 cents Australian. That would cost me to get a six pack. Shipping is probably more because it's international. So presumably 60, $65 for a six pack of Ric Flair's mushroom, whatever energy. Strawberry Who knows if Ric Flair will even ship it to you, pal? Will, it, will he even ship to Australia, pal? Pal, this product is a disgrace, Kevin. This is what Tony Khan is mortgaging AW's future on. Ric Flair's banana strawberry energy. Disgusting. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> just, All right, pal. I don't know. Kevin, that being said, let's just move this on. Enough about this just, just disgraceful energy drink. Let's ask you this. Let's move to a more serious tone. We did this whole discussion in our Crown Jewel review. Um, I want to kind of rehash it and sort of move it on a bit here. Regarding Solo, uh, this guy, as we've discussed, as you all saw with your own eyes at Crown Jewel, mercilessly destroyed one of the greatest of all time, the man who Michael Cole was doing the Cole claps for, the claps at ringside, John Felix Anthony Cena. Solo destroyed him. The question is to you, is Solo Sokoa WWE's next breakout star? Yes, he is. Why? He, he just beat John Cena. Just destroyed him. Okay. I, I assume Cena's not going down like that. Cena's going to come get his lick back, pal. Who knows when Cena's going to come get his lick back? Will it be at WrestleMania? Will we see Cena versus Solo at WrestleMania? And then Solo beats him again? And then Solo goes on to beat your favorite uh, Universal Champion, Roman Reigns? I don't know, but yes, the short, short answer, yes. When you beat John Cena... In a convincing fashion like that, you are a breakout star. Like, that's it. You know, Cena, Cena went one-on-one with Kurt Angle in his debut. Became a breakout star. You know, we saw Jeff Hardy with that, that famous match with The Undertaker on Raw for the Undisputed title. Became a breakout star. That's a moment that makes a star. Solo Sokoa is here to stay now. That's fair. Um, I, I, as you said in the Crown Jewel review, they need to work double time. Yes. From a booking standpoint with this guy, uh, it's it's one thing to do what they did at Crown Jewel and have Solo, this guy who's been around for a tick over a year, 
mercilessly annihilate John Cena like that and have Cena leaving Saudi. He's he's emotional. He's taken in the crowd for the last time. He's waving to people. He's walking somberly up the aisle way. It's all well and good to do that, but there needs to be a lot of follow-up. And by a lot of follow-up, a lot of follow-up, <laughs> you know. Um, Kevin, when I was thinking about Sokoa, I mentioned this when we were discussing it the other day regarding sort of similar comparisons because I'm thinking with Sokoa, who have we seen that are sort of like this, that kind of the enforcer, the quiet type, doesn't speak a lot. The names I thought of, I thought of three. We mentioned Umaga, someone like that. That's he, As I said, I think Umaga has a bit more of an intimidation factor or had a bit more of an intimidation factor, but no reason why Sokoa can't, Sokoa can't get there. I thought Batista, that's the obvious one everyone's thinking. Roman's yeah. the Triple H. Yep. Sokoa will be the Batista. Is Sakura as good as Batista? I mean, we haven't seen it yet. You know, I mean, but Batista, it just Batista, same thing as Umaga. I feel like, and I hope this isn't retrospective bias, just had something extra to them, just an extra thing. I don't know what it is, that extra it factor, in my opinion. And then maybe a Rikishi. I mean, Rikishi probably fits more of the, I guess, aesthetic. He's more similar. I don't know. I, I or, thought you were going to say Kevin Nash. You know, he well, started Kevin, out as Shawn Michaels' bodyguard. And then they kind of told the whole story of like Diesel being like, "All right, bro, like I'm sick of you treating me like garbage." That's the other one that could work too. Maybe you know, probably examples from before then in wrestling. But yeah, that, that, that's just sort of I guess template. Really, I mean, Umaga, Batista, sort of Rikishi, Kevin Nash. Uh, Kevin Nash is still a top twenty-five wrestler of all time, uh, as he turned out to be. Core NWO Jesus member, Christ. year-long WWE title run, huge in the context of wrestling's history and impact. But that being said, teach their own pal. Is Solo the next breakout star? Yeah, you say yes. He's been given all the tools yep. to be. Uh, I, if we're narrowing down to one one breakout star, then I guess we have to say that because of what he's done to Cena. But I'd I still choose to view someone like a Gunther more so, even a Bron Breaker or maybe Melo Hayes. As sort of a next get, Gunther's kind of here. I don't think Gunther's a breakout star at this point. Gunther is a star. Twenty three hasn't been a breakout year. You don't reckon? You don't he, think? He, he's he's just here. He's here already. Like I think he's already broken out. He's one of the the top stars in the company. You know, I I think he's already proven that he's past the point of being labeled a breakout star. That's fair. That's fair. No, Kevin. That being said, let's move to the next question. Um, uh, I'll ask you. The Miss is now babyface. Are you excited? Power talk to us. Uh, I have to let out a big sigh. Uh, so I saw this uh, this clip on Twitter making its rounds of the Miz doing like a cross body and like a tilt the world uh, DDT, and everybody's yeah. like, "Oh, Miz is in his bag!" Like 2015 John Cena. I'm like, bro, oh, come man. on, man. Like, come on. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? He did a cross body, bro. Like, <laughs> okay, and. And he's doing his stupid, like, anger hype up, like, yeah, yeah, I'm the Miz, yeah. And I'm just like, why am I watching this on my timeline right now? Okay, the Miz hit a cross body. Good for him. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You know? Like, it's, uh, it's ridiculous what, what people uh, will do on Twitter, you know? Grasping at straws to get that Elon Musk money, pal. Get that sweet, sweet X money. Yeah, it's it grasping the straws for a few hits of dopamine. Um, as we've discussed and we've gone into at length, especially on Twitter or Wrestling X, you, you, you make a point of anything, oh, this guy deserves this, or this, look at this, they're doing this really well, or you try and bring something new or some a fresh, spicy take to the table with someone who's already been around for a while, and then it, it pops off. The Miz is the latest example. Uh, you know, he's a baby face now. I guess he's cutting promos about you know, being the, the guy you need to beat and being the, the legend who you need to prove yourself against. Oh, my God. You know, it's like, bro, this is this is The Miz. I, I get he's been around a while, but, I mean, you've we've done this bit at length on this show. It's like the guy who's been working at Google for 25 years, hasn't changed himself much at all, had a good little stint as the interim manager in 2016 where he was popular for a bit. Then he took a step back because it was too much for him, and then he was just sort of around the place, and he's had some time off on leave. He's come back all fresh and renewed a few times. He's gone off and gone on some holidays and he feels good sometimes. Other times he's just there and yeah. he's just a long, he's a long tenured employee. 
Yeah, now the, he's... The, the Miz is the guy that's been there so long, and he's like the one that the that the manager in the office, you know, the big dog, the executive, uh, that person just yells at him all the time, just like like takes his head off. Like that's the person that that the executive, the manager vents their frustration on, you know, and he's like, ah, oh, this guy takes it, so shows up, does his job. Let's keep him around. Pretty yeah. much. Um, so yeah, now he's facing Gunther. I'm sure the match will probably be good. It'll probably be the Miz's best match in a while. Yeah. So he's facing Gunther, who's the, like the only heel who doesn't need to cheat to win matches. So now the match will be quite good. Um, but watch Gunther have to cheat now to win. Imagine Gunther huh? has to cheat to beat the Miz now. Oh, man. Imagine as soon as I start bringing this up on the show and making a point of it, Gunther needs like four people to beat the Miz. Imagine. Yeah, he's got, like, Jey you know, Uso comes out the crowd and just starts beating up the Miz, pal. And it's just like, yeah, Jey Uso's here <laughs> helping Gunther. <laughs> Now the Miz goes on a flurry, hits his devastating, skull-crushing finale, pal. Uh, I don't know how, and just one quick bit on this before we move on to the rest of the show, I don't know how Mike Mizanin grabbing, like, your arms like that and then putting you forward and then you sort of fall, like, on your chest is a skull-crushing move. Like, I think a skull-crushing move would more be, like, a curb stomp or, like, a, you know, a top rope diving knee to the head. That's a skull-crusher. The, the Miz grabbing you... Like, like you just did with your hands there like this and going, uh, like that. If that crushes your skull, your skull's made of literal glass. Like, it's, there's not much to your skull. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to a serious topic, Kevin. I'll ask you, this is something which, I mean, people have been hyping up. Once again, this is mainly on the sort of the community, the, the people, the, the diehard wrestling fans. Because I think in the big picture, this doesn't matter at all. But I'll ask you. Tina is back, pal. Um, Impact has been around. It's survived through thick and thin. They've been wrestling in empty bingo halls. They've wrestled at baseball stadiums in front of next to no one. It's been like watching Empty Arena Performance Center, WWE, except for the last 10 years, it's felt like. They're still around. They're still kicking, Kevin. TNA. It's not so long ago Impact Wrestling. It's TNA, pal. Are you going to be tuning in? Are you going to be telling the people at work? Are you going to be getting the popcorn, chips, dip, beers, and watching this? Talk to us. Oh, pal. Yeah, TNA Impact is back, baby. Uh, but they're not bringing back the six-sided ring. So what's the point of, like, this whole rebrand? I don't know. I mean, it, it's nostalgia, honestly, at this point. That's all it is. They're just trying to, to play off, like, you know, the, the, the aura, the era of, uh, like, Perk Angle and Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and those guys doing anything to try to get traction Really, that's what it seems like. Um, I'm not too sure. Of, I'm not in tune with what's going on in uh, in TNA nowadays. I really couldn't tell you who their champion is. I, I couldn't tell you, like, five members of the roster. Good. And question, because, yeah, like, we can say that. A lot, a lot of sort of podcasters or wrestling people can you know, say, oh, I don't watch. I don't really care. But the, the question is a follow-up I'll ask you. Why? Like, what is the main reason why... You're not interested. Why, why don't you watch TNA Impact? What, what's the main thing for you about TNA that makes you go, nah, I don't need to watch that? Like, like why? Well, we've been there with TNA. I mean, I, I grew up um, in particular watching TNA. You know, it was like a, it was a legitimate alternative for maybe like a year or two years um, there for a little while in like 07, 08, 09. So I watched it for a few years. Uh, and I just like, I've just it it's had its moment its moments passed. Now it's just an indie fed. Like I I, I stopped watching TNA when they did the Aces and Eights storyline and the culmination of that was Bully Ray being the leader after like like he revealed that in the middle of a wedding segment he was supposed to marry Terry Belea's daughter uh, on Spike TV. And he comes out and he's like, "I I am the Aces and Eights. I've run the Aces and Eights." Then you got like Terry Blaya's daughter in a wedding dress, like frantically being held back by by security from going crazy. And yeah, that was the end of uh of old TNA Impact and uh my enjoyment of that show. So that's yeah. why I don't watch. Uh, but realistically, it's like they haven't given me a reason to. You know, mm. their their marketing isn't great. Their product is not great. Um, they have their core fan base, and hats off to them to the people that watch uh, TNA every week. Yeah, and to me, it's more so on the marketing, like, and how it's presented. It's not really given a, a reason why you need to watch. It's sort of like, yeah, I, I feel like with Friends of Our Show, like, we're, we're the, the only show you need to hear. Or we, we just give you 
what basically a normal or just a casual sort of everyday wrestling fan or person or someone who likes wrestling or sports entertainment, what they need to know, what are the main topics. That's what we try and do. We try and be a, a hit for you. And then you can, you know, understand what's going on for a week and then move on. You don't need to listen to four different shows that are two hours long for a podcast during a week. You don't need to, it, it's it. we try and keep like that. With TNA and Impact and what they're doing, I couldn't tell you what their identity is. And we'll do a, a whole extra thing about AEW's identity crisis sometime in the next few days or maybe it's dropped already. But TNA's had this for years and it's a, a prime example. They, they were the original TNA angle was there. They had all those originals that, you know, Styles and Yardy Rude and the, all of them and, you know, the Motor City Machine Guns and all that. And then it sort of dissipated and just became, yeah, Aces and Eights. It became Bischoff and Hogan. It became whatever knockoff, poor, bad, weird WWE thing they were doing, which just wasn't as good. And then there was the Jeff Hardy incident and there was just so much that happened and Dixie Carter and, yada yada and then it just fizzles out and it loses momentum loses steam and it just becomes eh, it's just eh, whatever what's the what's the incentive to watch so yeah that's sort of where we're at now i think that's all we need to say about it not really much unless they do something else that's going to rock the boat at least we've mentioned them i think it's the first time we've discussed well, they TNA. might sign philip jack brooks pal yeah, he was backstage you know philip jack brooks will be in the impact zone pal that cult of personality will be ringing through the speakers in front of 800 people in the crowd, pal. Oh, well, that, that's a great way of end, ending that segment. Uh, Kevin, I'll ask you now, transitioning from something which next to no one's really interested in to something which has a bit more interest, uh, War Games. So this will be the Survivor Series main event. Yes. Uh, first, I was going to say, I love the poster with Cody and the camo paint. It's that's great. just a cool... That's a cool yeah. wrestling poster. A plus level poster. That's what I say. No, hundred percent. That's a poster which you'd see in the ruthless aggression era. You'd see that. You know, that's one of those posters you look back on ten years and go, "Damn, that was a cool poster." It's like, like yeah, it's he, like the the Jeff Hardy one where he's underwater. That's like that was so cool. For real, no, it's like the late two thousands yeah. sort of posters where you can remember them. And, Damn, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of like that. Um, some people are saying, "Oh well, why do we have to see Cody with face paint? That gives me PTSD to Stardust." Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you, smart-ass wrestling Twitter person 101. Point being, it's a dope poster. War Games is main eventing Survivor Series. They did the sick brawl to close Raw, which those are just cool. I, I like those segments, personally. The chaos, hell's frozen over. It's a very wrestling 101 segment. There's nothing brand new, fresh, original, but it works every time. Gets the crowd invested. Wrestlers are flying everywhere. Security's there. Refs are there. Adam Pearce is screaming. Did a good job. Uh, Kevin, question for you. Um, what are your early predictions? Because there's going to be a fifth man on each team. Uh, who are we thinking, pal? Hulk thinking? Hogan, pal. I mean, he was the third member of the NWO. So, yeah. Hulk Hogan's going to be the fifth member, pal. Yeah, there he is. There's Terry. Yeah. Oh, I mean, who, who else would it be? You know? Kevin Nash, 25th best ever. Yeah. Um, no, I... <laughs> Kevin, there's a lot of talk about Randy Orton on, in this. Yeah, now, so, so Randy Orton joins Cody's team, and then he beats Cody up at the end, and then they start their uh, their feud about whose father has a better legacy. I like it. Let's do it, there pal. You go. Yeah, they, they do a match, you know, main eventing one of the, one of the Raws in December. They do a match at the Royal Rumble. They do an Elimination Chamber with both those guys in it where Cody finally pins Orton, I guess, and then he gets to WrestleMania. I don't know. Potentially. Uh, who the, the extra guy is for the Judgment Day? Drew, you think? Probably, a probably Adam Drew. Copeland, pal. Ric Flair's energy, Paul White's knees, Jeff Jarrett's guitar. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, Kevin, it, it, it's gonna be a big match. This is gonna be the main event. Um, this is the Survivor Series main event. I do like that this actually feels like a Survivor Series main event. Um, last year's one did as well. They did a big Bloodline War Games match. This beats when they were doing like the 2018, 2019, just throw everyone in the ring and have, you know, Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT or Raw versus SmackDown. Like th those got pretty overplayed. Hey, how about 2015 when uh, Roman Reigns had to have hernia surgery and Dolph Ziggler got thrusted into his spot and single-handedly carried the babyface team and everybody thought that Dolph Ziggler was finally going to get his push. 2014, yeah. Then, then is that 14? Yeah, 14, out. yeah, yeah. 
and you had Triple H like drenched in sweat at the end with his like business top on, throwing wrestlers, roaring. Stephanie was like crying at ringside. Ziggler, like, Ziggler just like emerges as Super Sana and just like pins four people and wins. <laughs> like wrestling was weird. It was, it was weird in 2014. And then Kevin, how about 2015 when Roman Reigns, who at that stage no one was really liking, just won the world title tournament. Seth Rollins' knee exploded a month prior. And then Sheamus came the out. Mayor, pal. Kicked him in the face and won the title with a nose ring. Remember that? Yeah, was it? What was the, the tagline for that? Sheamus 3-3. Three, three, what was it? Sheamus 515 Sheamus 515 fell. I kicked him yeah. in the face. And I kicked his arse. Like, oh, <laughs> my God. Jeez. These are some of the dark I'm days. I'm getting PTSD enjoyed, flashbacks but... right now. All right, back to the, back to the topic here. So, re- realistically, mm-hmm. I think the fifth man... For both sides, I think Randy Orton is a great um, shout out. And pal, I'm gonna say it right here, pal. This is what I'm gonna say. All right, the Judgment Day member, the fifth member of Judgment Day is gonna be CM Punk. You heard it here first. Yep, Ooh, it's gonna be okay. CM Punk, pal. He, he, him, and Fergie are gonna be posing in their underwear, and you know, CM Punk's gonna be an honorary member of the Judgment Day, bro. Wow. I mean, that would generate some buzz. Wow. Yep. Can you imagine? There you have it, pal. That, that's definitive. That is... Yep. That's it. That'd well, that's be- how you end the year on an absolute bang, pal. That, that'd be Pepsi Phil, pal. That'd be explosive. That'd be powerful. Um, that being said, I guess, question for you before we go to Around the World. One last one to close the show out. Uh, we're now in November... Uh, so this is traditionally, and it was back in the day when you start talking about the big show that happens at the end of March or the beginning of April, pal, WrestleMania, and uh, what that sort of looks like. Uh, question for you, I mean, off the top of your head now, or just generally, what are sort of the main matches that you want to see? Now, forget what, I guess, dirt sheets or rumors are saying, but like if you, if Kay Garcia had the pen, you're in the board meeting, Paul Levesque walks in, Sean Higginbotham, Nick Khan, Ari Emanuel... Endeavor executives, you've got executives from Philadelphia, they're all sitting there, you've got the pen, you're at the head of the table, you go, we're doing X, Y, Z, what are the matches? Alright, first match, pal, I want to see Gunther versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go in there first. Second match, Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest for the Intercontinental Championship. Mm. Okay. Damian Priest cashes in on Gunther. You know? Oh! Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, that is... I like that. They, they do this a scathing storyline where Ray Ripley gets in, like, and and attacks Gunther. And Gunther, like, his morals are in the question, like, oh, does he hit a woman? Does he not? So he just takes his beating from Rhea Ripley, and then Damian Priest beats him, pal. <laughs> that would, that'd be crazy, imagine. That, that'd be the end of Gunther, pal. But, no, <laughs> like, like, on a serious though, I don't know how they get there, but Damian Priest cashes in on Gunther. We get Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest for the Intercontinental title. Ooh. Yeah, with a little bit of a okay. curveball for you. And then, okay. I mean, the, the, the biggest one, Roman Reigns versus your boy, Cody Rhodes, yep. for the uh, Undisputed Universal Championship. Uh, that's a must-see. Uh, that match would be bigger than the first one, pal. It, it was once in a lifetime, so good we gave it to you twice in a lifetime. Bigger and better than ever. Cody Rhodes triumphantly dethrones Roman Reigns. WrestleMania goes off the air with Cody Rhodes standing on Roman Reigns' chest, holding both titles, holding all three titles. You know, Paul Heyman's there crying. You know, we need it, pal. Give it to me. I like it. I like it. Give uh, me what I want. Would, would you do Ray versus Dominic too? No. No? No. Okay. No. Fair. Uh, okay, so for me, I was thinking about this. I'm like, how do we, how do, we do this? I, I did see rumors... Well, rumors based off what Will Ospreay tweeted mm. uh, regarding Seth mm. Rollins. And I thought, you know, the mm. Rollins World title match, a bit of a Rollins Ospreay thing would be decent, mm. which I'm just saying. Mm. Um, I'll put that into the universe. Ospreay tweeted the eye emoji. Uh, Ospreay saying. would be smart to go to WWE. Uh, he he got to learn from Jay White's mistake. Yeah, get out of a sinking ship while you can. You hear that, MJ? Uh, so there's that. Rollins Osprey, <laughs> that, that's your, your, your wrestler's world title match. And then what, what does that leave for Gunther? Well, I, I, I do Gunther Brock Lesnar, personally. I think that match is a WrestleMania Woo. match. Woo. 
Ooh. now I, I'd, I'd have the storyline begun to say, I'm going to end your career. Like I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to finish your career. Wow. Have that be the story. Wow. Be like, you know, th- that WrestleMania 40 mat will be the last mat you see. It will, I will end your career. And Brock's like, Oh, okay. And then that they can have a, like a, a classic pal. So that's how I do that. And then obviously Cody Roman, it just, it is happening that, that, Paul Levesque wrote down a piece of paper in February 2023. It's going to happen in April 2024. They're going to, <laughs> they did that basically so that they can close WrestleMania 10, 20, 30, and 40 with the big baby face winning with confetti just so they keep it thematic. Um, cool. Cody will win. Um, if Roman retains, I'm just, I'm done with the podcast. We're done. There's no point doing what we do if Roman just wins again and just goes off. So, if, yeah, Cody will win that. That'll be a great main event. Uh, well, remember and, yeah. the the other uh, the other cousins they got released from MLW. So Jacob Fatu and I can't remember the other guy's name, but yeah, we'll see Jacob Fatu at WrestleMania 40, pal, in a hoodie, attacking Cody. I reckon, and this is uh, this should be probably I should say this for a bold call for yeah you know, December one, but I'll, I'll make it now. My prediction: the WrestleMania 30, oh, 40 now WrestleMania 40 main event Cody Roman that will have. I'm going to say six different superstars interfere wow. in that match. I think that's going to be... We're going to see you know, a Pharaoh like sighting? Fitting. Jay Uso will be involved somehow. Jimmy Uso will be involved. Sokoa will be involved. I mean, QT Hayman Marshall? Count. There's, going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of kerfuffle Dustin in that. Dustin Rhodes? So, yeah, pal, just to recap for my XYZ matches, you'll have Rollins Osprey for your wrestler's title. I'm going to have... Gunther Brock, Gunther trying to retire the beast. And I'm going to have Cody Roman and the definitive coronation pal. So there you go. I'll leave that there. Listeners, what are you, what are you thinking? Uh, what, what are we saying? What are we saying? What are we saying? So, All right, pal, it's that time. This has been a great episode of Elite Take. It's time to go around the world, pal. Where yes, are we going, sir. pal? Where are we going? Pal, we're going to New York City, pal. New York City. We're going right to New York Uh, City, pal. We got to talk about my beloved New York Knickerbockers. There we are. New York. There you go. New York City. Yeah. So, um, Julius Randle is off to a historic start to his 2023-2024 NBA season campaign. And that historic start is he has the lowest field goal percentage to start a season to this point in a season. Since 1959. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's shooting like 23% or something from the field. Um, and that's on high volume. He, ta- he takes a lot of shots. Yeah, he's shooting tour dates. I-, I-, I can't even tell you how many times I've been sent that meme from friends that want to troll me. Like, just like enough, bro. I get it. Julius Randle sucks. I've been saying that for four years. I get it. Um... Yeah, the guy, he's, he, he shot, he's shooting like 4 for 15, like, whatever. I'm going to pull it up. You, you talk. I'm going to pull up his, his numbers. Kevin, yeah, and, and the problem is, I mean, just on, on the Knicks, I mean, we have obviously, I mean, Brian, a number of our listeners are actually Knicks fans. I mean, you are. Uh, with them, Brunson's actually playing really well. But yes. the team is just being tanked by Julius, who can't play like a star. He's got his bag, and he's just doing what you're about to write off. All right, pal, just, you ready? I'm ready, pal. All right, so this is Julius Randle, Julius Randle's field goal line here. October 25th. That was opening day. 5 of 22. Followed that up with a 4 for 10 shooting night against the Hawks. Then 4 for 15 against the Pelicans. Then 5 for 14 against the Cavaliers. Then followed that one up again against the Cavaliers by shooting 3 for 15. Then wait, there's more. <laughs> wait, wait, there's more, pal. 5 for 20 against the Bucks. Oh, wow. And then his latest tour date, this was a stop at home in the Garden. 9 for 21. His best performance yet of the season. Um, and that brings him down to a whopping 29.9% from the field. 25% from 3. With a uh, nice uh, lofty 15.6 points per game average. So, yeah. On top of that, um, if you guys watched the, the Knicks-Bucks game, uh, I believe that was Friday night or Saturday night, uh, so you would have this noticed that uh, Julius Randle uh, displayed a lack of effort, um, a lack of sportsmanship, 
uh, and was quite frankly jealous of his teammate, Jalen Brunson, that he's now the star of the team. I mean, look, bro, you had the opportunity, you had the keys to the kingdom to be the, the star of the Knicks. I mean, you, you dropped it. You dropped the bag. You started booing people. You put thumbs down. You said the fans, they, they don't have a right to boo you. I mean, you, you're, if you come at New York fans, you're not going to win that. You're not going to win that battle, bro. So Jalen Brunson has been embraced by the fan base. I think Jalen Brunson put up like 45 points, did everything he could against the Bucks. Meanwhile, Randall's shooting one of nine from three. Why is Julius Randle taking nine three-pointers? Well, you saw what happened down in the last like, couple minutes of that game. Brunson's, he's already passed 40 Disgusting. points. Disgusting. He's making every shot. Then it, Brunson goes for a shot. He, he gets, you know, heavily contested. He misses. This is when the game's on the line. Julius Randle's, like, yelling at him. Pass me the ball. Should give me the ball. And it's, like, one of nine from three. He shot a two a day against the Bucks. Embarrassing. Pal, this is bum. your New York Knicks, pal. Just He's a bum. Pal. He's a bum <laughs> right now. But, pal, that being said, at least the Knicks are in ninth. At least they're in a play-in seed at the moment. They're, Who cares? they're sitting at, what, three and four. So I don't even care. Who cares? I don't, I don't even understand. How does the NBA season work now? How does this in-season tournament even work? Like, can you? do you know? Do you understand? Uh, I think it's like every once every week or two... They're going to deck out the court with this weird look. And then there's going to be a game, just a regular, regular season game. And if you win it, there's like a, a group that's separate from your division group. It's just a group with a bunch of other conference teams. And then once you've all played each other, whoever has the most or second most wins will then play other. And then they'll eventually do like the top four. And then they'll decide a tournament champion. And all the players will get like $500,000 or something each, I think. I don't know. Yeah. That's my interpretation. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't really care. For me, the NBA season is hard to watch because my team is so bad. Uh, it's just, I've already given up. I, Kevin, watching the Bulls, when halfway through the first game, the home season opener against the Thunder, the players gave up. Players weren't trying. And then there was a players only meeting after the game. And then they came out the next game and had one of the worst performances I've ever seen in a win against Toronto. It's a disgrace. So I want my team to blow it up. At least the Knicks have Brunson, who you can rely on for at least a few years as like the star of the, the, the team. And RJ Barrett's playing well every other game, sort of. Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, so, you know. Right, what you team, what team is DeMar DeRozan getting traded to, you think? <sighs> I honestly don't know. I yeah, Back to the Spurs, whoever, whoever pal. Well, Kevin, I'm seeing people saying Philadelphia can trade for some of the Bulls stars, Levine, Caruso, some of the Bulls guys. The Bulls are sort of a team where anyone who wants to trade for a player is just looking at the Bulls. They have all the trade assets because the Bulls want to blow their team up. So, this is true. I don't know. Kevin, I sat through four years of a rebuild, watching 22 win seasons for our peak to be like Lonzo Ball getting us some regular season wins and then the team tanking to one playoff game win in 2021. And the rest, and the rest has just been thirty-five win seasons. And now they're going to have to rebuild again. Kevin, the Bulls have been the worst franchise, or one of the top five worst since the two thousands began. Yeah, just, I mean, it starts with ownership. Their ownership is cheap. They've been cheap, like they had Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and they were just like, "Yeah, we don't want to pay Scottie Pippen. Nah, we're good." Like, yeah. who who does that? You know. Well. Kevin, as the last dance was explaining very clearly, they're in a position where they're paying MJ like the same as most, some NBA teams are paying their whole roster. And th th they had literally had the option, you can pay for MJ for another season for 1999 and pretty much guarantee a title, basically. You can pay for another championship or you can just not. And they opted not to. And then everyone left and it's just been a bit of a mess since. It's been yeah, Derek yeah, Rose's yeah. legs. And then yeah, Jimmy Butler Derek for Rose year, so. for like a year, yeah. And Jimmy Butler for like a year before he went off to Minnesota. And it's like, okay. Um, Kevin, that being said, um, any other basketball opinions on this, pal? The season's trotting along. We're now like a three, four weeks. Any big takes or do you not really care? Like, where are you at? I, I'm not really watching much of the NBA right now. Yeah. I'm not like, like, I just, I see, you know, I watched the Bucks game, the Knicks Bucks game. I'm like, uh, this is really tough. Um, yeah, the regular season of the NBA is just boring, you know? It's it's not a it's there's no there's no real incentive to watch, you know you know the players don't care 
half of them are injured. So, well, Kevin, and as much as I've, I've critiqued him, you can see why Jokic shows up. And there's videos and warm ups, just him during games. He's just like, like that. He just doesn't want to be there. Doesn't care. Because I mean, that, that's how the regular season's presented. It's just sort of like, oh yeah, you know. And then I'm sure some player will hit a game winner, or someone will pop a good stat line, and you know, social media, the 24 seven cycle. He's him, breakout star, next top this, next big this. And then it's like, okay, it was a, it was a game on November 6th against Detroit. Like, are we really, are we really saying he's going to be the next MJ? Like, come on, what is this? But I don't know. Um, anything else you want to address there, pal? Or can we, I guess, wrap it up? No, there? let's get out of here, pal. There that you go, that pal. was a Good great show. episode of Elite Heat. Powerful, powerful show. Kevin. We'll talk to you all in the next one.